Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Wednesday night edition of Inside the Headset. Going to roll back over to Memphis. Going to talk to my good friend with the Memphis Whitehaven Tigers, head coach Rodney Salisbury. How you doing tonight, coach? I'm doing great, Stork. How you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Well, what's been going on over at Whitehaven and uh, uh, what kind of a, a fall prep practice slash scrimmage slash whatever as you get ready to go to war on Saturday night and uh, it'll be an away game for you over at Memphis Central. Well, actually, it'll be at our place. It'll actually be at our place. I don't know how they got uh, the You know, I I, I, I researched another website, media website, and it said you were away, but I'm sorry about that. But it will be over at Whitehaven. Yeah, it'll be over. We have our annual Whitehaven Classic kickoff game of the year, so we're excited about it. Uh, and things been going well, you know, get a couple scrimmages in and ready to get to work. It's been exciting, you know, guys are getting a chance to see other people and excited just to kick off the season and have an exciting year in Memphis football. Well, we always want to hear the numbers as uh, you, always have a, you always have a large crowd. Talk to us a little bit about how many kids you're going to dress out Friday night. Well, we're gonna to try to dress as little as we can, but I mean, we got we still around that hundred number of kids, almost right at a hundred kids out there uh, participating in football. But we're probably gonna to try to dress about seventy five or eighty of them, uh, you know, because just trying to get that sideline management down. But we definitely still got right at a hundred kids out there playing, so we're, we're excited about uh, kids wanting to play football. Well, and is that is that a, a uniform logistic, or is that just strictly you all just saying? We're going to cut the line at 78, 75 kids and, and, and making some of the other ones get a little hungry. What is that? Yeah, that's, that's what it is. It's, uh, we, we, got, we got 98 jerseys. We actually, we got, 90, yeah, we got 98 jerseys that we could dress, but uh, we don't, we're going to try to limit that number, just do a sideline match, just make them want to earn it, make them just make it a little hungry. That it's, a, it's always a privilege to get in that number that's going to dress on, for, on, on the game day. Oh, yes, and, and to be a part of uh, that special crowd there, always at Whitehaven at home. And, and you know, the opener, I mean, it's kind of like you've worked hard. It, and it, it exemplifies who's worked hard all summer in the off season, Coach. Oh, uh, yes. You know, it's hard work pays off. Uh, you want to see all the things you did all summer in preparation and uh, working that process of getting becoming a team every single day. And now you get a chance to see how it all comes to fruition out there on the football field in the live game well and you were playing a really young quarterback i think last year and 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 how has he progressed and uh and where do you feel like he is now compared to when he was at this point last year uh yeah well actually our quarterback is going to be a sophomore this year so we got a young guy back there and he's um a young guy back there but he is mature beyond his years uh, we're really excited about what he can really bring to the table. Uh, he's going to be thrust into the fire, but he's shown all the things uh, through the spring practice, through summer practice and preparation. Man, he 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 plays the game so well above the neck, and just want to get him some experience. So obviously, his first few games are going to be really good for him as a sophomore, uh, getting out there and really getting the chance to get comfortable out there on the football field. Did you not have a young quarterback last year? Yeah, I had uh, we had a, a junior, a senior, okay. and a junior that we played last okay. year. Okay, that's what it was. Uh, yeah, you, but yeah, yeah, that, okay. yeah, the junior is no longer with us, so we got a got a young guy that stepped up. He's ready, and uh, he was kind of showing himself to be ready this year to play. So he's kind of he's kind of been a part of your program all along, and so he's kind of yeah. understood what you all want done on Friday night. So it's not all it's not all Greek to him what he's getting out there into. Even though he is a sophomore, he kind of knows what y'all are expecting. Oh yeah, he played at our feeder program at Haven View that feeds right into us, and he was with us as a freshman, uh, leading our freshman team and playing JV last year. So he got a lot a lot of play last year as a ninth grader. Uh, so he's ready to jump into the fire and take the mantle and be the leader of the. Whitehaven Tiger football team this year. So, uh, it, you know, and you're in the other side of the bracket, so we could always, you know, if a Rutherford King, team, County team was to make it to the championship and you were to get out on the other side, there's always that possibility. I could see you in Chattanooga. I mean, but a lot's got to happen between now and then on both sides of the ball, but uh, that's the goal, isn't it? I mean, you don't you don't set the bar low. I mean, you want to go, you want to go Chattanooga. 
Oh, that's our that's our thing. Our goal is uh, we have one goal, and that's to get our third goal ball. We want to get our third state championship, and uh, our guys as part of our chance. We we break down on that every day. We want to make sure the guys understand the goal is to get the goal ball, and through that process, it's a week to week process that you build to. You got to take care of your region, then get to the playoffs, and then get the chance to get to Chattanooga and try to win a goal ball for the Whitehaven community. And I tell you what, your region over there, it's gotten a lot. It's gotten meaner, as, especially in the last four or five years, even through COVID. Uh, you, you, it's not, it's not easy to get the, get out of you. You got a lot of guys over there in that region that would that uh, that that could keep you out, and you've been kept out before. I mean, you, you the Germantowns and 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 the Bartlets and so on and so forth. Yeah, our region is tough. We got eight teams, and all eight teams play quality football, and only four can make the playoffs. Uh, again, I'm always petitioning. It's like there's no way we should just have all eight teams on this, this whole end of the state all in one region. We should have a bit of parity where we can get more teams out and just get the representation at the state level. Cause, but uh, that's not how it shakes out right now, so we just got to fight this gauntlet. Uh, we call it the SEC of the 6A. We got a quality team, so every week you got to come prepared to play. Uh, Memphis Central is not going to be an easy task. They've always got good talent, and this is a good game for you to start off on. What do you know about Memphis Central and what's coming in on Friday night? Or Saturday, Saturday, excuse me. Well, first and foremost, Coach Wright has done a great job just historically with his teams, having them prepared to play. So we're expecting a well-coached team. Uh, They're going to do what they do on offense and be well-coached on offense and defense. So we're expecting a a well-coached team to come in and play. So anytime you're playing a team that's going to be disciplined and sound, uh, you got to make sure you – Well, we lost the coach, and I have no idea why. As the PC has shut down, so we'll see if we can get the PC back up and, and get things rolling here. I do have no idea. I've never had that happen. I just had the PC completely shut down. So hold tight. You're still on the air with me. So let's see if we can let's see if we can get things going here. I'm not for sure, like I said, what completely happened, but I've got a complete PC breakdown. And that could ruin everything that's going on here at the present time. As we are plugged in and charging. And I'm trying to get everything back up. Rodney Salisbury probably thinks I've I've let him go in the middle of the show. Don't you hate it like when a computer wants to upgrade or wants to do what it wants to do and you're trying to do something else? It's not easy. But you guys should still be on the air regardless if I still have PC power or not. It didn't, shouldn't affect the show, so let's see if we can get Rodney back going on the call. Just hang tight, kids. Technical difficulties. Don't you love it? Hello? Uh, coach, uh, wrong number. I need to get back a hold of Rodney. Sorry, Coach. That was the wrong number. We didn't need to do that. Let's see if we can find Rodney. Here it is. Uh, there it is. Let's see. Let's get back a hold of Rodney. Hey, Stork. I got you. Really lost you there. I'm so sorry, Coach. I disconnected with you, but I did want to finish your interview, and I did mean to cut you off there. I, I lost power to the to the whole show, but anyway. Uh, just wanted to say, uh, no, uh, you know, Memphis Central will be a tough ball club for you, and uh, and we wish you the best of luck on Friday Night Lights. Hey, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All righty. Thank you.